What's up guys? In this video, we are going to talk about the respiratory therapist's role when it comes to fighting COVID-19, aka the coronavirus. Are you ready? Let's go! And now before we get into it, I just want to give you a quick disclaimer. Now while this is a respiratory therapy channel, and I am a registered respiratory therapist, I'm not an expert when it comes to the details of COVID-19 and this pandemic. Even though respiratory therapists are on the front lines when it comes to treating patients who are infected, I'm not a doctor or scientist, nor am I an expert when it comes to controlling infectious diseases. So with that all said, please visit the CDC website to learn everything you need to know about COVID-19. But everything that we're going to talk about in this video, the research came from the CDC website. And I also learned a few things from the World Health Organization and the AARC website as well when specifically talking about the field of respiratory therapy. But just know that Respiratory Therapy Zone has no affiliation with any of these resources. These are just the trusted and reliable sources that we use to do the research for this video to learn about COVID-19. And depending on when you're watching, the situation is very fluid, meaning that as of now, things are always changing. So just be sure to check the CDC website often for the latest information. But getting back on track, let's talk specifically about how respiratory therapists help to combat and treat patients who have tested positive for COVID-19. These are truly unprecedented times during this global pandemic. Respiratory therapists have always been vital members of the healthcare team, but that is especially true now more than ever. Generally speaking, respiratory therapists are trained to treat patients with cardiopulmonary disorders, and they work with physicians to treat such patients. This includes patients who have tested positive for COVID-19, as it is a disease that affects the respiratory system. You should also know that respiratory therapists are trained to operate mechanical ventilators. Respiratory therapists can initiate and manage patients who are in need of breathing support from a mechanical ventilator. Mechanical ventilation is a form of life support that is used to assist with spontaneous breathing. In most cases, patients who are in need of ventilatory support are considered to be in critical condition. Respiratory therapists are trained to operate mechanical ventilators and make changes to the settings when it's necessary depending on each individual patient's condition. COVID-19 is an infectious disease that targets the lungs and respiratory system. This is when mechanical ventilators come into play because patients will need extra breathing support. And this is also where the role of the respiratory therapist comes into play as well because they are needed to manage these machines and provide care for the patients who are infected. Now a question that I've been seeing quite often is, is there a shortage of respiratory therapists? According to the AARC, there are approximately 150,000 respiratory therapists in the United States. Since the COVID-19 outbreak started, as I'm sure you can imagine, the need for more respiratory therapists continues to grow. So I don't know if there is a shortage or not, I just know that we are all counting on respiratory therapists as well as other healthcare workers during this time. Many of you watching this video right now who are respiratory therapists are probably working overtime hours and extra shifts right now as we speak. And for that, I just want to say thank you for your service, commitment, and dedication to helping us all get through this crisis. And another very important question is, where can you learn more about COVID-19? Now again, the CDC is the trusted source for all the latest information about this disease. In fact, real quick, let's talk about how you can protect yourself and those around you. First and foremost, you can self-quarantine and practice social distancing. Stay at home as much as possible to help prevent the spread of the disease. Practice social distancing and avoid interacting with others in person as much as possible for the time being. And one of the most important things that you can do is wash your hands often. 
preferably with soap and water for at least 20 seconds or you can use hand sanitizer solution that contains at least 60% alcohol. And according to the World Health Organization, we should all do the five, which basically means that we should do five things. First is hands. As we said, wash your hands and wash them often. Number two is elbow. Cough into your elbow and cover your mouth when coughing or sneezing. Use a tissue if possible and dispose of it when you're finished. Otherwise, you can cough or sneeze into the inside of your arm or elbow. Then, of course, wash your hands. Number three is face. Don't touch it. Keep your hands away from your mouth, nose, eyes, and just your face in general. Number four is space. Keep a safe distance. If you must be around other people, try to keep as much distance between you and them as possible. And number five is home. Stay at home as much as possible, especially if you're sick or showing flu-like symptoms. And this of course means you should try to stay home except when you leave to go get medical care. And another thing to keep in mind is if you're sick, try to wear a face mask. This applies for only when you're around other people because this can help prevent the spread of the disease. If you are not sick, you do not need to wear a face mask unless you are around someone who is sick. That is because at the time of this recording, face masks are in short supply here in the United States. So it's best for you to save them for the medical workers who are on the front lines and who need them to protect themselves while they are treating patients. So again, if you're sick, yes, wear a face mask. But if you're not sick, you do not need to worry about getting these face masks because we need to save them for respiratory therapists, nurses, doctors, and every other healthcare worker who are treating these patients. They need the mask for protection. And as we wrap up this video, I just want to give one final word from the Respiratory Therapy Zone team. I just want to say that our hearts go out to all of those who have been affected by COVID-19. You will continue to stay in our thoughts and prayers as we all navigate our way through this pandemic. I hope you stay safe and most importantly, I just want to say thank you for your service, dedication, and willingness to put yourself before others. I think I can speak for everyone when I say that I appreciate you and everything you're doing and will continue to do during this time. And as I said, to stay updated with the latest information regarding COVID-19, be sure to check the CDC website often. I will drop links to everything down below in the description. Or if you want, you can just go to cdc.gov and that will take you straight to their website where you can click learn more about COVID-19. Once you get here, it literally has everything you need to know about this disease, including the number of cases in your state or location. But if you want to learn, for example, how to protect yourself, it's just going to show you everything that you can do to protect yourself and to protect those around you, including a lot of the things that we covered in this video. But I still recommend that you come here and read through all this information because they go into much more detail. And also, it's going to tell you what to do if you are sick and give you all the steps that you need to take in order to protect yourself and to prevent the spread of COVID-19. So if you're a respiratory therapist or any other type of healthcare professional, you can come to this website and navigate through these resources to learn everything you need to know. And just be careful with the information that you hear, maybe through Google search or through other YouTube videos, because some of that information may be outdated or it may just be false. So just always take everything from the CDC website just to be safe. If possible, I hope that you'll like and share this video with the respiratory therapy community so that we can continue to raise awareness about this great field. And if you want, be sure to subscribe for more videos. Thank you so much for watching. Again, stay safe, be responsible, and let's continue to do our part in combating COVID-19. That's it for this one. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next video. And as always, breathe easy, my friend.